Indianapolis Raceway Park pushed off the sprint cars for the debut oval race on May 28, 1961 on what was then a dirt track. Cotton Farmer was on hand to show his driving style in the Frommer Sprinter number one. Also there, driving car number 56 was Bob Kleberg, the Sterling Plumbing Special. A.J. Foyt was there in car number one, the Bowl Seal Fast entry. And Johnny White had his trouble in number seven. Roger McCluskey would soon become a USAC Sprint Car Champion, but on this day, he rode out this nasty flip. Roger was uninjured. A.J. Foyt drove to victory in the first ever USAC Sprint Car Race at Indianapolis Raceway Park. ESPN, the world's leader in motorsports coverage, presents Speed World. Tonight, live from Indianapolis Raceway Park, it's the Switzer Candy USAC Sprint Cars. Brought to you by Bush Beer, the beer with a taste as smooth as its name. By Quaker State Motor Oil, the Big Q stands for quality, always has, always will. And by Goodyear Eagle Tires, Goodyear, because there really is a difference. It is a hot, hazy night in Indianapolis. The temperature is still 85 degrees. Low humidity, however, and no chance of rain. We're glad to have you along for a momentous night in motorsports. Hi, I'm Gary Lee, along with Steve Chassis. The first time since 1981, the USAC Sprint Cars are back on the pavement. A trivia question for you. The last time they raced here, 1980, the winner, Steve Chassis. These cars have been described as the most volatile race car ever designed. Not a lot of weight and a ton of horsepower. They're tough to hang on to. They really are, Gary. They're very exciting. And they're the, the highest horsepower to weight ratio car there is. And at one time, these cars were a springboard in, to Indianapolis because the owners that owned these cars also owned the Indianapolis cars. They're just terrifically fast and hard to hang on to. The pavement tracks, it is strictly a pavement car. There is your leader of the heat race. That is car number one. That is Steve Butler. He is the two-time defending USAC Sprint Car champion. No one has ever won three straight USAC Sprint Car titles. He's going for it this season. He's won the last two in the Stoops entry, number one. He is leading now. This is the second heat race. He is leading young Billy Bukovic the third, who is riding in second position. There is the checkered flag as he takes the victory. Second place goes to... Young Buki in car number 21. That is the battle there for the fourth and final transfer position. And there is the look at your winner, Steve Butler, in car number one, the bright red. The match had been inverted. So consequently, on virtue of being the sixth fastest qualifier, Bob Fry in that V6 Chevrolet will start from the pole position. Outside, Mark Alderson in car 52. In the second row, we have Tony Elliott in 57, Andy Hillenburg in 69. The third row with the two fastest qualifiers, Steve Butler, and your fastest uh, time trailer this evening, Rich Vogler in number two. Jim and, you, and here they come, and it's going to be another four abreast into the first turn. The drag race down the front straight away to the corner, cleanly across the start finish line into turn one, and it is that V6 power plant, the Chevrolet V6 leading the parade down the back stretch. So we'll see if they've got the handling worked out. And obviously that's a big change when you drop that off. Set. Mark Alderson in second in the white number 52 as they begin to work single file now into the third turn into turn four down I believe the first of 30 circuits. We'll see, we'll see how the horse is working quickly in a car that was built and now being wrenched by Johnny Cables who is the team manager for uh, car 21 on the IndyCar circuit the Jiffy Mix car of Howdy Holmes the Alex Morales team. A lot of smoking tires in this group. There, those guys are putting on 110 percent. Oh, look at that move to the inside by Steve Butler, and look at him smoke that tire. He can't use up and abuse a right rear that way, or he won't be around for the finish. That's correct. He's he's laying on it real hard and trying his best to get by, but he's, he should slow down a little bit, let his tire cool off, and then make another shot at it. Well, we have Benny Rapp in car number 14, the 60-year-old gentleman from Michigan, and he right now is out in front of your leader, so traffic could be a problem. He was given the courtesy flag of the over flag last time by, and uh, there is a car pulling off on the uh, back stretch. Looked like Dave Pepperack on that paved uh, road down to the infield. Dave Pepperack in 77. There is Benny Rapp in the red, white, and blue number 14, the veteran from Michigan. He slides over, uh, eating the move over or courtesy flag, and there is the gap. You can see that gap between first and second. Hillenburg is still second. There is the battle for the second position. Hillenburg in the white number 69, the Hoffman Sprinter. 
And there is Steve Butler, a two-time defending sprint car champion, tries to make a move on the inside. Can he make it stick? They almost get together. He likes that low groove, but he can't carry the momentum through. He may do it the next corner. He's close enough on him now that he might be able to make that go. Well, now is uh, Vogler being wise and just kind of watching what's transpiring in front of him? Is he waiting for a mistake to occur in front of him? That's exactly what he's doing. He knows that he's faster than these two guys, but he can't get around him without using his tire up. He'll let these guys use their tire. I mean, he's just, the tires will, will go away when they smoke like that for all these laps, and he'll, he'll have his chance. The only fallacy is that waiting so long, oh, hang on, Andy, hang on, Butler. Butler gets T-boned by Vogler. Well, he was waiting for a mistake. A mistake was made, but the mistake gathered him in. First, Hillenberg got sideways, then Butler got sideways, and Vogler had no place to go, Steve. He had no place to go. You know, and it was it was such a slide there, it looked as though there might have been something dropped on the racetrack, whether it was water or oil, because when the slide started... Let's look at it again. Now, look at Hillenberg. First going in, he gets sideways. Butler is down low. He gets sideways. I think he climbed on the brakes right there to avoid hitting... Uh, Hillenberg, yeah, yeah, and when he hit the brakes, he got even more sideways, and, and, and uh, the front end collapses on uh, Vogler, so you can see why he climbed out. Yeah, yeah, it looks like Butler might be able to restart. Another angle of it now, you can see Andy Hillenberg, the white 69, he gets sideways first, and I think perhaps right here, Butler tapped the brakes a little bit, his rear end comes around, and Vogler had no place to go. Yeah, he just had no place to go, it was, uh, uh, he's doing well, uh, Steve Butler's changing a left rear tire, you have to start last again, and with 18 laps to go, we'll be in our way. It's, it's an in and out gearbox to direct drive. Well, right now he is second in the point standings, and a good finish this evening would allow him to move by Jack Hewitt. Now, Jack has had a phenomenal season the last two years in the dirt division. Green is flying, and we are racing once again now. We're working lap number 20. 19 laps are now complete. This is a 30 lap event. Now let's see if Andy Hillenberg can utilize this yellow flag to his advantage. He had a big gap between first and second, but once again, with less than uh, one lap complete on the restart, a nice gap develops between uh, first and second, and there goes number 21. That is Billy Vukovic III. He is riding in fourth position. He just went by Benny Rapp. Benny Rapp is riding a father. Look at Butler going by about three or four cars in one lap. Watch Steve Butler. If anybody can do it from the back of the pack in 10 or 12 laps. This racing series every Thursday night here on ESPN. And Bob Fry has led from the starting green in V6 Chevrolet. We've got a heck of a race here with, with, with uh, Tony Elliott. He's Elliott right now is in third in that silver number 57. And look at Butler. Here comes Butler. He's on the infield grass. Now that's not an off-road race here, Steve. That, that's, that's extending yourself to the limit. Well, a very exciting driver from Kokomo, Indiana, trying to become the first driver ever in USAC history to win three straight championships. In fact, only two of the drivers have won three times in the sprint car uh, title chase. Here's a little boogie. And look once again on the inside. Those two drivers being uh, Larry Dixon and Sheldon Kinzer. Buki is having just a tremendous drive. He's going to school. He is learning. He is up to third position. He just got by Tony Elliott, rides the high groove, and he is really applying the pressure. He looks like he's about to go by Hillenburg. He looks real good. Oh, he does look good. Look at that pass. This is the best. But look at Butler. Oh, look at my. Butler passing two guys, almost three guys in a corner. Amazing. If the car could stick down there, he'd drive right by him. Well, if he were a few years older and uh, Japanese... Well, he could have been a kamikaze pilot in World War II. He's this going guy for is it. wild. He is going for it. Look at this move. Number one, Steve Butler. Came from last again. Well, now he's moving up to the third position he's in now. He's in third. Butler moves up to third position. We have five laps to go, but Butler, I think, will need a yellow flag to have a shot at victory here. Oh, I think so. I, just, I, I can't see any way he's going to catch uh, Bob. Well, Fry continues to dominate, but this ride by car number one, the red number one, the Stoops entry, is just sensational. Steve Butler, from the back of the pack, is up to third position. There's a look at Gene Lee Gibson in the black number three. They work off the fourth corner, and right now, he has a good shot, speaking he meaning Butler, he has a good shot at catching and passing Billy Bukovic the third. There's a good look at number 57, Tony Elliott. 
And there is the battle for second place. Second place right now belongs to Buki, but here comes Butler on the inside, and he is hustling that sprint car. He's really hustling, but I don't think he'll get by Buki because Buki's fast enough on the outside. He'll get off the corner better. I and just... look at Gene Lee, two of the best young drivers in America. Right there, Gene Lee Gibson and Billy Vukovic. And Steve Butler will yell at me and say, why do you call me a good young driver? Well, he is good, but he's <laughs> not that move. young. Look at this move. Look at that on the inside, and he slides up and makes the pass. That's amazing. Butler is up to second from the back of the pack. He is now up to second position, but the laps wind down. Two laps to go. He is out of time as far as catching the V6 Chevrolet of Bob Fry. But look at this battle for second, third, and fourth. Gene Lee Gibson, the black number three in fourth position. The white flag is being displayed. Right has put on every race they've had in, the, in these sprint cars, midgets, and champ dirt cars, or the silver crown cars, has been an excellent competitive race like it was tonight. But the sprint cars here, they put on a show that is second to none. Uh, midgets on a short track can't put on a better race than these guys here. Well, we have seen some excellent racing back in the pack, and, and so frequently uh, in a race of any nature, the winner can, or the leader can get way out in front and leaving the good battling to those in the back of the pack. And we have certainly seen that a marvelous drive on the part of Steve Butler this evening. After he had that altercation up there in the first turn, went to the back of the pack with a new left rear. There is a great look at uh, the driver. And I think, you know, we talked earlier about uh, Goodyear donating the Driver Achievement Award of $1,000 in the name of the winner to the charity of his choice. And I think it has to be unanimous that Steve Butler should receive that award this evening. There is a look at your winner. He is in victory lane with the Goodyear Driver Achievement Award of $1,000 will go to Steve Butler. And uh, that $1,000 will go to the charity of his choice. And there is a look at Bob Fry. And uh, we heard earlier Brian Hammond say he's won at Anderson on the quarter mile at Phoenix on the mile. And this being a 5 8 mile track, he's victorious here. And that V6 certainly could be the engine of the future. It, it, it could be, but you have to remember that Bob Fry is probably one of the best pavement racers in the and we're back live at Indianapolis Raceway Park. And the man who finished second in tonight's race wins the Goodyear Driver of the Race. $1,000 will be donated to his favorite charity. Steve Butler, you were definitely the most entertaining drive tonight. Well, thanks, Brian. That's not exactly what I wanted to be when I came here. I'd, I'd like to have won it, but uh, we got a little bit of bad luck there when uh, Rich and I got together and we had to go to the tail. I thought we were working real good to, up until that point, and uh, I'm just glad that we could get the Stoops Freightliner uh, back up to second. I think it was working real good, and I, I think we would have had a shot at winning it, you know, had we had different circumstances, but Bob did a good job, and, and I'm glad that uh, Hardy's and Switzer put on the show for us because I really like this, uh, this asphalt racing, Brian. Steve Butler finished second, the man that finished third.